So, uh, greatest digital tool that we don't use? Wikipedia. And I know some people might be thinking, the greatest tool? That's a bold statement. Um, I hope to back that up with some facts. Bigger budget than any archaeology organization in the UK is what Wikipedia has. 52 million they spend each year on maintaining Wikipedia, and by maintaining, they do the whole thing where a browser, you know, Netscape 2.0 still works on Wikipedia, all that sort of stuff. If you're thinking about digital engagement and you're thinking about your budget, which usually digital engagement ends up being no budget and saying, open a Twitter account, um, you'll realize these numbers are just amazing. Uh, the largest commercial unit in the UK had a turnover between about 12 and 15 million in 2012. I'm pretty sure that's higher now, probably around 20. But that is basically the top, the tops out there. The new historic England's probably only going to have 20 to 40 million. I'm guessing closer to 20. And that is just in pure dollar terms that this resource is going towards you that you can tap into. Um, there's sort of the intangible, the stuff that would be almost impossible to calculate. So that's how many articles, how many people have done edits. Uh, I calculated out, if you were to do an edit a minute, it would take you 6,000 years. So there's just so many man hours, woman hours, child hours uh, being put into Wikipedia that you just, it just pours onto itself. You can't actually, archaeology would never, never reach this level. It also has the very concept of co-creation built in. And so I know co-creation is sort of like one of those buzz words that we're using right now. And the whole idea is that basically everyone works together. It's not a top-down uh, sort of affair. It is everyone working at the same level. And Wikipedia is that, that's built in. You don't have to go out and try to force this. Um, anyone can edit Wikipedia. And everyone does. Um, I'm not trying to, this sounds very simple, a very simplification of what Wikipedia is. There are rules. It's not Lord of the Flies online. Um, but basically, if you're going to do a project and you'd like to use Wikipedia, the very concept of having to work with the public and working with them on the same level, you guys start out at the same level. It ticks every single box of the HLF on their best guidance. So preservation takes care of that. Be online five years after you do whatever you do on Wikipedia. Yes, it should be there, or at least an archive of what it was when you did it. It's open source, stores all your files. It's usable uh, for people with disabilities. So if you happen to uh, be blind, uh, basically you can use Wikipedia. They've taken care of all that. That goes back to the resources that get pumped into it. Um, if basically, if there's any sort of thing you want to do, and you're thinking about doing something digital online with HLF, I would recommend Wikipedia. It ticks every single box. So there's a couple of graphs right here. Uh, if you see the top one, you'll notice that every couple of days there happens to be a little bit of a spike there. That is the Wikipedia page for Vikings. And this is from a couple of months ago in America. The History Channel came out with a sort of <coughs> soap opera drama, Vikings. And it aired on Sunday, and basically after it aired, every time, people would go to Wikipedia to learn more about Vikings. Now, can anyone guess what this graph, what article this is right here? Um, date is February 2013. Anyone want to take a stab? Richard III. Richard III. About two million people in a month after that announcement go into Wikipedia to learn about Richard III. Uh, should be able to see it, but first day, 800,000 people go to Wikipedia to go and learn about Richard III. Um, it drops out and you have 600,000, only 600,000. Um, <laughs> I would give my left hand to have those numbers on any of, any of my digital projects, and I'm left-handed too. Um, it's just amazing. The reach that you get, it is the go-to source. Um, I think someone made the comment earlier, it's telling their students it's not the only source on the internet. Yes, it's definitely not the only source on the internet, but it is usually the first source. It usually ends up being uh, a top three search, which means it gets the majority of traffic, and it happens to be reliable. So if you're looking in terms of reach, all these resources basically means Wikipedia will be towards the top. And not only towards the top, sometimes 
the information there, you need to click on the Wikipedia for the information to get out there. So I'm sure you've all Googled, and then Google will give that little answer box to the side in case you didn't want to actually click on anything. They're trying to answer it for you. It comes directly from Wikipedia. So this is about the Bosnian pyramid scam, pseudo-archaeology stuff. I don't know how you want to describe it, but Wikipedia described it as a pseudo-archaeology um, sort of trying to promote <coughs> Uh, by this author. So basically, before anyone clicks on any link, first thing that comes up is Bosnian Pyramid, pseudo-archaeology. Um, and people may not ever click on anything else. They may stop right there. So Wikipedia, basically, Google is taking all the information off there. It's such a good source that they use that for basically most of their facts and putting in facts, bo facts boxes. And we suck at it. I mean, we really suck at, uh, at archaeology on Wikipedia. If you go and read some of the articles, they have concepts that were kind of in vogue in the 1930s. Um, and I do know, I have a pretty good idea of why that is. It's because those books are out of copyright, and so people can access them. But you have descriptions like, the savage people of, and they have a quote, and then you go look at the book, 1919. Um, there's actually very few archae archaeological sites on there, very few heritage sites. Um, most of it's poorly sourced. There's a lot of information out there, but it's not making it to Wikipedia. And there's not many active editors in the archaeology area. So we're really not using this uh, uh, resource. But basically, if you want to put something top three search on Google, we just are not using it. So I'm going to sort of talk about ways that we possibly can use it and uh, utilize it and some things that I've done and some ideas I have. We created WikiClub. Uh, you know, first rule of WikiClub is anyone can edit the rules of WikiClub? <laughs> no, no, that joke did not go well. Okay. See, when I told WikiClub, they laughed. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, we meet in Edinburgh, and Edinburgh because I live in Edinburgh, and we all live in Edinburgh. And we meet up about once a month, and we edit Wikipedia articles. And we have found the golden ratio, which is about <coughs> 1 to 2, or 1 to 3, which is 1 hour of Wikipedia, 2 hours of drinking, 3 hours of drinking. Um, and it's actually most of a so more of a social event, but we've actually started to build up a group. And to be honest, <coughs> none of us had known how to do this. We had to get Pat up from York to teach us how to use Wikipedia, and we've basically been learning. Uh, but now we meet almost monthly and edit. Articles. Right now, Brock's, because we're in Scotland, and there's not a lot of articles um, on Wikipedia about Brock's, so we decided to take a stab at it and try to improve it. I would recommend going to uh, Robert Connolly's blog. He has some great posts about using Wikipedia uh, basically at university. So he taught a course on how to use Wikipedia and research. Excellent stuff. He's an archaeologist, works in museums, um, and he's basically built a course around Wikipedia, how to use it, how to better take the sources, how to edit it, and so forth. You can integrate Wikipedia into education. That's quite easy. Um, instead of doing an essay, you could have them basically the same thing, take information and put it up into a usable form. Um, only more people can see it if it's on Wikipedia. So this might be a bit controversial, um, and I realize that it's probably a very long shot. But the idea behind most of our cultural heritage laws is that we do archaeology to save the archaeology and give something back to the public. Now that usually ends up being great literature, or occasionally, if you're lucky enough, it'll be an excavation monograph or a journal article. These tend to be expensive, so people can't actually afford them. Book runs right now from publishers are about you know, 80 to 120 books. If you're lucky, most of them go to the university libraries. And we all know that project that has been in write-up for 20-some years. And who knows when that's going to happen. Quick suggestion. Part of what you could have done for the mitigation proce process is actually have some archaeologists do a Wikipedia article. Let's say you dug a Bronze Age cyst. You know, you can go and write something about the Bronze Age on Wikipedia. It's quick, it's free, it's instant, and you can verify it. And you'd probably be reaching more people on that one Wikipedia article about the Bronze Age than the great literature <laughs> report that you wrote. 
And this is not to say don't write the graded literature report. It's just saying if we want to have some sort of component and give more back to the public, uh, Wikipedia might be a good option. So this is a, uh, a competition that was run on Wikipedia. It's called Wik Wiki Loves Monuments. There is a million images free to use about monuments around the world. Uh, it's a competition. They just ended it in November <laughs> this year. It goes every year. There's winners. Great thing. <coughs> People go around and just take pictures. If you're looking for a free resource, if you're looking for an image for a monument somewhere in the UK, um, I would go to Wiki Commons, look at this uh, competition. It's amazing. But why not Wiki Loves Archaeology? We all have tons of reports with photographs. And yes, not all those photographs are sexy or nice. A lot of them are just dirt and mud. But we could really source this, and it could actually be an amazing resource for people who are needing images for whatever reasons. I'd finally like to end. I've been talking about Wikipedia. It is part of sort of an ecosystem that is run by the Wikimedia Foundation. And so there's all sorts of other projects. Uh, there's Wikibooks. Uh, there's Wikidata. So now you can put up editable data, and people can share it and use it. Uh, very interesting, very fun stuff. Um, and so I would just like to say that there's many other things that you can do with Wikipedia, well, Wiki, Media, the foundation that runs Wikipedia, not just Wikipedia, uh, if you're interested. And so I'm hoping I've convinced you that if you really want to reach a lot of people and get the information out there, Wikipedia might be a really great place to start. Very cheap, takes all the digital boxes, um, and it's fun to use, too. <laughs> Thank you.